Hey, what's up guys? Big update here because I just got done doing a lot of maintenance and we will go over all the mods now considering I've done a handful more mods since last video. But as far as maintenance, the car is at I think 112 or 114,000 miles and when I had the intake manifold off because it is direct injection, I did notice the intake valves and stuff like that were starting to gunk up a little bit. Not bad, but, you know, enough. So I made the tool, got the walnuts, blasted them clean, then put it all back together with an aluminum thermostat housing, new coolant hoses and all that, right as I got it back together. No leaks or anything. Let it sit overnight. Came out the next day. Oh yeah, look at that. All the coolant pissed out. Uh, for some reason... I had cracked the, there's a coolant pipe that runs down underneath there that connects into the water pump, which is right there on your drive belt. And somehow when I must have put in the aluminum thermostat housing, I must have pushed it into the pipe too hard and I cracked the end piece of it and it was leaking. So I ended up just upgrading the water pump then and threw on aluminum water pump and a new, uh, water pipe and like I said that aluminum t-stat housing so we'll go over all the mods here now starting with the fun boy uh, the spoolie snail is a hybrid KO4 F21 and it's only running 22 PSI um, I think it peaks at like 3500 rpm 3000 and peaks pretty quick it, it's a quick spooling turbo um, I'm also running a speed tech short runner intake manifold so it helps get that boost into there much better and it also has a downward facing throttle body instead of to the right so i had to change the routing under there to it so as it gets into the manifold it more evenly distributes the air into the cylinders that was probably one of the most noticeable upgrades i did on the car i mean obviously besides the turbo but that manifold that, that that thing helped a lot. Um, I had to get a custom cold air intake. I had a guy off eBay custom make this for me because the inlet right here is much larger than stock. I think it's um, 15 or 20 millimeters larger than stock. So you can't fit an aftermarket tube on this turbo or even a stock one. They will not stretch. So I had to have him custom make that for me. Then there's my mass airflow sensor. I'm running in it to a k and Apollo filter, which I have sealed into my firewall, and it gets the cold air from right there, so it's a true cold air intake. Um, I've also done all the upgraded intercooler hosing, so it's got the sound deletes and stuff like that. Uh, my intercooler is a, can you see it back? Not really, but you can see it kind of. An Alta intercooler, it's an oversized one. I'm also running a Catless downpipe, and I have that wrapped. And you see I also have a turbo blanket, and I have the heat shielding on in there too, which I also high temp silicone sprayed. Um, it's running to the OEM JCW exhaust, and I do have the carbon fiber JCW exhaust tips to go with the carbon fiber interior, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, I'm running NGK R Step 1 colder plugs, which are the OEM plugs for this JCW motor. Yes, by the way, this is the N14 JCW motor. This is a JCW. Um, it's also got the Dean and Ignition coils. I'm running a Turbo Smart diverter valve, not the blow off valve, it is a diverter valve because I didn't want to mess with any lack of spooling or anything like that. I actually like it to spit that, that air back into the intake because in between shifts, I tested every blow-off valve, diverter valve, you name it for this car. And this by far is the most responsive one next to the OEM diverter valve. I highly suggest not getting a blow-off valve. Yeah, they sound cool, but you're losing too much boost between shifts and the turbo has to work too hard to spool back up. Just, just trust me on that. I've also experimented with all the intercoolers. And the cheapest eBay one I found is the best because it's the highest flowing. I just have my Alta on right now because I haven't switched back. Um, 
like I said, I also got the uh, aluminum thermostat housing in there. All upgraded coolant hoses, all back there to the firewall and stuff like that, all down through there. Let's see if you can see them underneath. No, too dark. But yep, yeah, they're all, I got them all done. Um, I also did an aluminum water pump because the OEM is plastic, impellers are plastic, so I didn't want to risk that failing. So why not just do aluminum? Also got the aluminum coolant reservoir because once again the stock are prone to splitting in half because they're a two-piece pressed plastic unit. Junk. Um, also, I suggest this being your first mod, a flexi, flexi oil dipstick. The stock are prone to breaking and if they break, they can get in your timing and they will fuck it up. They will make it jump off. It's actually happened a lot with these cars. Um, let's see, my suspension mods here. I got Rev9 Hyper Street 2 coilovers with the caster camber plates. And I'm running them, as you see, not that much of a drop, but enough to make them look nice. The, they got 32 sets of adjustment, 32 being the tightest, 0 being the softest. I have the front set at I think 9 or 10 and the rears are at like 15. Anything more than that it starts getting bouncy too tight and honestly it's 10 times better than even my JCW suspension on here right now. Um, it's got the OEM JCW strut bar. I've got the adjustable upper and lower rear control arms. As you see, there's also no rust under there. This car is pretty clean. I've also did upgraded upper trans mount, lower engine mount, and upper engine mount. I did the power flex bushings with them. My rims are a 17 by 8 ET35 rotoform. And if you run coilovers, you're going to have to run spacers. If you run a rim, like the stock rims, that have an offset anything less than 40 so you will have rub my tires are also a 225 45 ZR 17 and I have about two millimeters of space between them and the coilovers only I mean it's tight I also have a sorry my cigarette went up I also ran an oil cooler just in case, so things don't get too hot. Um, I've done the front lip. It's just an eBay one, cheapo. I think it was like 50 bucks. You custom make them to your car. But I mean, it, it turned out pretty nice, as well as the side skirts. Those came with it, those cheapos. But again, they look pretty nice, I think. I also got the uh, JCW rear diffuser I don't know if you yep you can see him it's got the GP arrow under paneling um, I've done the VLAN uh, Union Jack tail lights it's got Union Jack door handle covers Union Jack uh, mirror covers and it's got the VLAN headlights also did LED headlights, or I'm sorry, LED fog lights. Uh, another cool little touch. I keep my interior mood lighting set at green, and I also replaced all the interior lights with green LEDs. I'm going to do green underglows eventually here too. All right, yeah, when I say I did them all, I mean I did them all. And I think the last modification is I've done a oversized hood scoop. And I took this piece right here, which sits flat. It's hard to tell with the camera, but I bent it down at an angle where you see under there as it shuts. The air brake sits about right here, so it catches half the air and blows it back onto the turbo to cool it. And the other half passes over the intake manifold to help keep that cool. But I also have, uh, can you see it? Dang it, there's a little ram right there. 
that also helps keep the manifold cold that feeds from right there that used to feed the OEM intake. So, I mean, it runs very, very efficiently. Even at the 22 PSI with this Alta intercooler, I see IATs, max IATs. I mean, I'm talking after a first gear pull up until sixth when I'm doing maybe 120, 130. IATs are only about 20 above ambient and the second I let off they're back down to 10 above ambient just cruising they will run ambient temperatures the intercooler is very very efficient it just doesn't flow the best so I feel like that's why that eBay one is better because it has a different style core instead of bar and plate it's got the uh Instead of the bar and plate, it's got the uh, tube and fin. Sorry, I couldn't think of it. So the tube and fin definitely flows more, but it doesn't cool as well. So that eBay intercooler is a little bigger because it's a stepped intercooler and has a fatter backside where the Alta doesn't have that. So I'm going to throw back on that eBay intercooler and see if I gain a little more boost and a little more flow. Uh, we'll go over the interior too real quick. I'll forget that. Not that it's too modified, but it, it came with the nice OEM package. As you see, it's got the JCW carbon fiber shifter, JCW carbon fiber e-brake handle. I did a shift boot delete. I got a wide band gauge, air fuel ratio gauge, and that is an AU tool multi-gauge. It's also got the JCW black uh, gauges and stuff like that. JCW seats. It's got the JCW wheel, which is a little smaller than the, the S wheel. You know, sill plates. It is a factory JCW car. As you see, it's got the uh, carbon fiber dash and all that and the, the trim pieces all around. So, I mean, it, it's a pretty nice car. It, it, it scoots pretty well. It's not quite on par with my uh, gray R53 yet as far as speed wise, but a roll race, this first the R53, I think it's going to be a much closer race, much, much closer. But off the hit, man, that, that gray R53 pulled so hard. Don't get me wrong, this thing pulls hard. This is probably a, if I had to guess to the wheels it's probably 280 300 horsepower give or take it, it's no slouch but I, i'm used to my r53 which was a, a little bit more and being supercharged it put it down immediately so yeah why not fire up real quick Oh yeah, I've also done a stage three clutch and a new flywheel. Also had new timing done. So all the maintenance is up to date on this car, everything. As you see, it runs great. Adrian did a remarkable job tuning it. No check engine lights ever, nothing. See, as you hear, that diverter valve's not loud. I don't have no silly pop and crack tune either. I, I hate that shit. My car is loud enough with the wrap on it. And about that wrap, I'll show you a little bit about it. See, I got the LED side markers. There's the VLAN lights. LED tail light or not tail lights but uh license plate lights i also did the union jack reverse lights the little bit of squeal you hear is my throw out bearing which was new too it's it's slowly getting quieter I do got an oil catch can also.
She's a pretty healthy one. I do have a new fuel pump and vacuum pump, so those will be going in soon. It's not needed, but again, it's at the 112,000 mile or so. Well, as a matter of fact, let's see where she's at. Oh, I'm sorry. It's up to 123 now. So, yeah, it's getting up there. I've been putting some miles on here. Um, it gets phenomenal mileage. I'm at 31.8, and I do probably 75% city driving, hitting lights, not getting above 45 miles an hour. Let's see if it has my average speed. Yeah, see, I, there's my average speed. So, I mean, even with this power, this car runs very efficient. I don't plan on changing the radio either. I love this Harman Kardon stereo in here. It actually slams with the speakers built into back here and the couple down there and being such a small cabin in here. Man, it sounds good, dude. I won't even lie. So I, I'm not gonna change them, but. Oh yeah, I got the JCW shift light too, as you see. All right, guys, that's where we're at. Sorry the video was so long. I, I had a lot, a lot to detail here. But one last thing. Let me show you why the wraps on this car real quick. Before I bought it, it lived through a pretty bad hailstorm in Colorado. Um, see the roof? Freaking perfect, right? Not a ding, nick, nothing in there. Or the, I'm sorry, the trunk lid does have one, see? But the roof has been replaced. This side's not bad. I don't think there is a dent on this side anywhere. And I think the fender's good. Ah, nope. Oh, that's a hood anyways. Hood's fucked. Let's see if you can see. She's pretty wavy from all the... Look at that. It's all bad throughout from the hail. It, it took some golf ball sized hail. Um, here, here's a good spot to see. Look at this dent right here. Look at that fender. She's toast, dude. Um, also, we're, look at, banked off right there. There's a few dents in the corner back here. This is dented right there by the antenna. There they are. You can see the dents in the corner right there. So, the wrap does a really good job at hiding the dents, as you see. Look at that. No one notices them, honestly. So, before I end up getting rid of this wrap and decide on another Nardo gray paint job, it's going to have to have a paintless dent repair. So, I, I got to find a guy who's going to be able to hook me up on that and then proceed with the body work after that. Because I, I don't want to keep this wrap. I want to do this car a full Nardo gray even the roof, Nardo, like a solid Nardo, the, the, the side flares, everything, just one solid color, no two-tone, nothing on here. Like these cars always come OEM. The top is always a different color. The flares are always a different color. I don't like it. I love them a solid color. So that, that's where we're going to be at soon. Next project for it is though, to take it to the next level so I can start whomping on what my R53 was. I did get a cylinder head to start building. I'm gonna pour it out, do the black nitrate valves. I'm gonna cam it, and then probably deck it a little bit so I can raise the compression up in this engine a little bit more since it's the JCW motor and they run a little less compression than the S. So that's where we'll be at, guys. All right, sorry the video's so long. Stay safe, motor on.